Thank you very much. Ms. Dalli. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the Commission for being here and for discussing this very important issue for our citizens in such a short um, time. Because, okay, we are speaking about the US and Volkswagen, but this is an issue that really, really hits home. And we have been, even in this committee, speaking about this happening in the EU. And the question remains what other car manufacturers are involved, because at the end of the day, it is a question of trust. And trust, yes, has been dented. And I'm a bit wary when the Commission states that we are speaking about NOx only. I mean, how can you be sure that it is not a question of CO2 as well? And if discussions are held with Volkswagen and US only, how we can be sure that there are not similar vehicles being sold in the EU? And we need to give clear questions to our citizens, because at the end of the day, it is our citizens' health um, that is in jeopardy. And yes, it's true we need a new stringent real driving emission test, but the question still remains whether the test produced can really guarantee that car manufacturers will not continue circumventing the system and not let highly polluting cars roaming around our roads. Can we have our mind at rest on this issue? And I would like to ask the Commission, can the Commission ensure that the way real driving emission tests carried out will produce real world emissions? And if not, are alternative test procedures being considered because at the end of the day, we need watertight rules, because this is a situation which we have been speaking about for long, and our first priority should be our citizens' health and the air we breathe. So we have to have a proper testing system as soon as possible and not continue waiting and providing an opportunity to certain car manufacturers to try and continue watering down the regulations that are in place and the tests and regulations that will be in place. Thank you. Well, the fundamental question that was asked by many of you is whether we are sure that this is only a Volkswagen problem or whether we are sure that this is only a problem in the US. As I said in my opening statement, uh, this is the main issue to be established and to be investigated. We have taken up all the contacts that I mentioned in order precisely to understand what is the scale of the problem. Uh, how do we find out whether it's only Volkswagen and whether it's only uh, matter for the United States. There are two ways. One is technical services to approve our authorities check conformity of the cars, and the second way is that car manufacturers disclose this information. There is no other way to find out what exactly and who exactly is concerned. So we will be waiting for the feedback for type approval authorities, and as soon as this is established, of course, this information will become public and known. Now, Many questions concerned the EU and the US system, and there were many calls or indications that the US system is better, is better, is well designed, is designed in a way which is more efficient and is what is enforced in a more efficient manner. I think we have to be, um, first of all, very careful before we jump into any conclusions as to the efficiency of the US system and also as to the efficiency or relative efficiency of the EU system. Why? Because the two systems are completely different and uncomparable. The reason why there are checks carried out by independent agents in the US is because at the start it's the manufacturer that certifies the car. So there is no public authority who would allow car to be marketed, which is exactly the contrary of the EU system. Because here it is this type of approval authority that has to certify that the product is ready to be marketed. Therefore, the order of things is reversed. Then obviously there are also checks that are made in the course of life of the vehicle, and they are of a different nature than the US. But I think it's very difficult to a priori dismiss the efficiency of the EU rules, therefore the system which is decentralized, and where member states take responsibility and say that what's happening in the US is much better. I think it's all very relative. Um, now, about uh, the tests that we are working on, whether we have tested the cars or whether we rely fully on what the manufacturers do. Of course, the Commission has also its facilities to make research and to test cars. Uh, we've been working hand-in-hand -hand with Joint Research Centre, and cars have been tested and in-depth research has been made, and that's what led us exactly to um, 
work uh, on the RDE package. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a package which is very much based on reality, on independent, I stress independent testing, and this is what brought us to the conclusion that we need to um, have the rules that we are just about to propose. We also have to keep in mind that this is uh, the first time that the use of defeat devices have been detected to such a scale. Of course, we understand that there might be, that manufacturers might indeed use methods which are not necessarily what we would encourage or allow. I think this is also fact of life in a sense that we have to have rules that are very stringent, very demanding, and we have to have very strong enforcement system. This is exactly what needs to be in place, and if this is not the case, that's what we're going to investigate. But we cannot deny that the fit devices being used in the order of magnitude that we are facing now, this is the first time that we've been confronted with this situation. You are right, rules exist. And this is for the member states to enforce these rules. So I think there is, um, there is no ambiguity that this sort of manipulation is uh, completely, uh, um, uh, completely illegal. Now, linked to that, a question what we can do to enforce, uh, also uh, with regard to broader type approval system. Well, first of all, if the car doesn't pass the test, it doesn't get the type approval. So this is very clear. Now, what happens if the car passes the test? Well, there are various measures that are available to national authorities. One of them is withdrawal of the type of approval. If it turns out that indeed the, the obligations have been, have been, had not been fulfilled. Secondly, member states can impose penalties. You ask what is the scale of penalties and to what extent they are dissuasive. Here we are entering a discussion which is indeed beyond the commission because this is a decision of each member state. 